Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Mr. Sanchez here coming with you for another lesson for our uh, pre-calculus section. We're doing section 2.4, part one right now, which is the library of functions. After 2.4, we're not going to do the second part of 2.4, which is piecewise functions. We're actually going to go ahead and jump over to 2.5, which is um, translation, transformations of functions. And then we're going to come back to 2.4, the second half, which is uh, piecewise defined functions. But we can't even do that if we don't know how to graph. So let's just go over all our major graphs. This is our learning to get the target today is graph the library of functions. So we're not going over everything in our library of functions, but we're going, we're going to go over to the most uh, common functions that you will be seeing this, uh, this half of the semester, okay? Um, so let's just go ahead and get started, all right? Uh, we, gotta, we start off with our square root function, all right? And there's a lot of stuff in here. So if I could just get your attention right over to this part of our graph. Wait, no, I don't like I don't like the way this looks. Let me take that. Let me just turn this off. Um, just right here to the properties of square root of f of x equals square root of x. Right? The graph of that looks like this. Um, this just this, this graph right here. It's a lot of graphing today. Um, it has these are the key points: zero, zero, one, one, four, two, nine, three. Okay. Those are usually the points that I graph when I'm doing the square root. Maybe you stop at four too, but at that bare minimum, okay? So you, you can, uh, for this for this graph, you, you notice you start at zero and then you go over to positive infinity. So the domain for the graph is zero to infinity. Same thing for our range. The range starts at zero. And although it doesn't look like it's increasing by much, it is increasing, increasing, increasing. It's gonna go slowly. The more you zoom out, it's going to go higher and higher. So the range is also um, not zero, zero. I didn't write it here in domain and range function, but basically from zero to in positive infinity. That's what our domain and range are. Our x and y intercepts are always at the origin for this graph. Um, and the function is always increasing, right? Uh, because our range is always, it goes from zero to positive infinity. And the function has an absolute minimum. Not every function has an absolute minimum, but this one does. And our absolute minimum is zero at x equals zero. Okay. And, and it's just this is just a square root function. Okay. Not that crazy. Uh, um, all right, let's go ahead and move on to our next graph, right? You're gonna have to write all this stuff down. It's gonna feel like it's a rush video, but we're just going over the key features and uh, we're gonna practice graphing these on our own in class and seeing what we're gonna do with them. Okay. Next up is properties of f of x equals q, cube root of x. So this is called the cube root function. All right, um, this function is odd, okay? Uh, it's odd, there's symmetry in there going on. The x-intercept and the y-intercept are at the origin. Uh, the domain and range is all real numbers. So you go, you can go all the way this way and all the way that way, and you're gonna have in a y value. And the range is also um, all real numbers. It's just like the square root function, it's gonna take a while to get up here, but it is gonna get there and it's also gonna go down here. It's just, gonna, it's just taking longer, but it will, it will get there. The function is always increasing because um, we're going eventually down to negative infinity and then we're gonna end up at positive infinity, okay? So it's always increasing throughout the whole graph. Um, key points are one, one comma one, eight comma two, negative one comma one and negative eight comma two, all right? If you have those points, you should have a nice uh, uh, cube root function, okay? Um, yeah, and those are the key points. Next up is our final graph for this page. Uh, we have uh, six, um, three more, five more to go over. No, four more. Um, next, the next graph we're gonna go over is the absolute value graph, right? F of X equals um, absolute value of X, right? And you might wanna write that absolute value. Is the absolute value function. All right, what makes this graph special? The function is even um, and it's continuous throughout. So it's even, the x and y intercept are both at zero. It's increasing from, it's decreasing from negative infinity to zero. Our values are going down, decreasing going this way. And then it's gonna start going increasing from zero to infinity going that way. This is increasing, this is decreasing. Uh, some key points, uh, one, one, three, three, five, five, negative one, one, negative three, three, negative five, five. 
Um, and it does have an absolute minimum. This one has an absolute minimum of zero, zero. The graph is not going to get any smaller than that. Um, let's see, let's go back to my meeting. All right. And that's it, that's the absolute va value function. It looks like a V, right? Um, and it's symmetrical with respect to the origin, I mean, to the y-axis, which is why it is also considered even. All right, let's go into our next page. Next, we're gonna go over a constant function. These are more functions from algebra one. All right, the constant function is we have f of x equal to some number b, and b is a real number, all right? The domain of our function is gonna be all real numbers. The range is only going to be b. Why only b? Because there's only one y value. And you're gonna see, yeah, this is our range. Well, it just goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, so our domain is all real numbers. It's basic, the constant function is just a graph of a horizontal line. And it's an even function with the y-intercept at uh, zero comma b. Most, it's the most straightforward function that we have besides the linear function, all right? Next, we're gonna do the square function, AKA quadratics, all right? So a square function, f of x equals x squared. The domain and range are from, the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. You keep going that way and this way, you're still gonna get y values. However, our interval, our range starts at the origin, so at zero, and it only goes up. It doesn't, it doesn't go down, right? And that's, that's, that's our minimum, all right? Um, it's going, the graph is going to be decreasing from negative infinity to zero, right? Um, the values are going this way. And then our graph is going to be increasing from zero to infinity. And let me just fix that infinity since it looks, it kind of looks like a six. So it's infinity. Right, it's gonna be increasing from there. As an intercept at the origin, and it's an even function since you can fold it like a taco, right? Or a hot dog, whatever you guys call it. You can fold it across the y-axis. Last, um, next but not last, we have a linear function. We call this the identity function. That's what we have, f of x equal to x, okay? Um, the domain and range of this is all real numbers. The x and y intercept are at the origin. The slope is one. It's gonna go up one over one. I didn't, my lines are off, so you're gonna have to just trust me on that. Um, it's always increasing because the graph is always going up and it's an odd function because it has symmetry across the origin, okay? And this one, you know, if it was two X, three X, still odd functions, still increasing. And the range, domain and range the same, it doesn't matter. All right, and now last but not least, let's go to our last function of the day which is the cubic function, the cube function, f of x equals x cubed. This is a graph we need to know how to graph. This is, the, this is our perfect odd function. The domain is all real numbers because if you go this way, you're gonna get an x, y, y value. And if you're gonna that way, you're also gonna get y values. Um, the range is from negative, it's all real numbers. So you're gonna go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So the, since the graphs are always going up and down. And one thing you're gonna notice is the graph is always increasing because technically, we're always, if we're reading it from left to right, it's always gonna go up, 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 like Cardi B song, up, no, not like that song, that song is inappropriate. Um, and it has key points, one comma one, two comma eight, negative one comma one, negative two comma eight, negative eight, and zero, zero. And that's basically it for today. It's just, uh, your assignment is just to copy these graphs. We're gonna go over what to do with these graphs on, on Monday. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go over just the key features on Monday, um, and then on, on, and then on Tuesday and over the, over the, and then, sorry. And then as for homework over from Monday, between Monday and Wednesday, we're going to go over what we call transformation. So for tomorrow, we're going to just explore some of the functions. All right. All right. Um, that's it for today, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye. How do I stop this? And move? Yeah, there we go.